Join me every weekday morning on The Patriot. Stay tuned live with Lou is next. Don't touch that dial. Oh, this is rich, isn't it? Anti-Trumpers are accusing the president of bullying the NFL. All of a sudden, it's out of bounds for politicians to criticize businesses because it's divisive. Really? Democrats have hounded the tobacco industry, the oil and gas industry, and the pharmaceutical industry for decades to raise their political profiles and rake in that social justice campaign cash. Hey, who can forget Democrat mayors Tom Menino of Boston and Rahm Emanuel in Chicago vowing to ban Chick-fil-A restaurants from their cities over the traditional values stance of the company's founders? Or more recently, the Democratic coalition against Trump's mass boycott of more than 250 corporate brands that it associated with Trump and his family. The First Amendment doesn't just protect progressive speech against politically correct corporate targets. The NFL and its noxious field of leftists are perfectly fair game. Well, all right, it happened. We had to slip into four-wheel drive this morning coming up Mount Hooth. It's sloppy out there, and people are already getting nervous. Some guy was waiting over at the drugstore at Walgreens yesterday, and a guy that I know came up. I knew him from B-Pod in Yuba County Jail. He said, it's raining. He was already fearing it's going to flood. And uh, I said, oh, I don't think we have anything to worry about yet. So it just rained all last night. And it's sloppy up here. So we uh, slogged in this morning, had to get all the wheels working this morning and then hike up the hill. And we're here on Mount Hooth out in eastern Yuba County, up in Jefferson country. In fact, I was talking to Wikiman this morning and somebody stole our banner. Our, our uh, We have an enemy within. We have an enemy within, a traitor within the uh, Patriot. It's the Patriot here. How can the station be called the Patriot and somebody continues to steal our Jefferson banner? I wonder if it's Paul Preston since he defected from the, from the state of Jefferson. It's uh, you know, I don't know. It, I can't find it in the studio anywhere. The, the nails are still there that held it up by the, at the grommets, but it's gone. So I just stare at this, this, uh, gringo carpeted wall this creamy carpeted wall so if you stumbled across this this morning you're awake that's a shock because we're kind of out here in eastern yuba county where hardly anybody goes to work uh, they wake up at the crack of noon and so uh, we're broadcasting here live from nine to noon uh, at the patriot that's 14 10 a.m it's called kmyc by some people a.m and you can listen a variety of ways if it's kind of scratchy out there in our fringe areas. I got a couple of calls from guys up in Lincoln the other day, bought gun raffle tickets from us. I said, oh, I can't even believe Lincoln up there in Sun City. Uh, the retirement uh, development up there, beautiful place in Lincoln. So I'll give you a shout out as well as over there at Tri-County Juvenile Hall. But if you have a tough time hearing us and you have a laptop, uh, if it hasn't been stolen by that guy that just got arrested out there in Oliverst, you can listen to us at kmycradio.com and click on the listen live button. Or if you uh, are unable to listen for the whole day or you keep getting interrupted having to do honeydews, you could just listen later. And you can listen whenever you want nowadays because of the 
graciousness of a guy named Chris Starkey who takes the show uh, and and removes some of the commercials and removes some of the bumper music because of copyright infringement to put it on YouTube. He has a YouTube channel, and you can go to that YouTube channel. You just go to YouTube on your computer and then go to One Eye Blind Media. I'll say it one more. You spell out the words with space in between, One Eye Blind Media, and then click on uh, the lists, listening lists. Look for Live with Lou and click on whatever show you want to listen to. And uh, people tell me that the quality is better than listening on the radio because with, with AM, there could be some static, right, or it could come in faint. And uh, so it's a new option, and a lot of people are liking it because they can pick it up anywhere in the world, regardless of whether the live stream is working. Sometimes the live stream works here. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes they blame it on mice. Sometimes they blame it, blame it on tweakers. Uh, Wikiman says he's got the thumbs up. That means it's working right at the moment, but you never know. Some What was the latest thing? Sunburst? It was sun. We blamed it on sunburst. Uh, you know, I, I honestly, I don't have enough education to sort whether it's a mouse or sunburst or a tweaker out here in East Linda. So um, one of the uh, disturbing... Uh, pieces of news that you probably heard is that Bo Bergdahl uh, was released uh, back into society with no punishment, no time, and uh, unbelievable. Do you remember Susan Rice? You remember she was the spokesperson, actually the liar-in-chief, when when the uh, – the attack happened on the embassy in Benghazi, and she went on a five or six news channels, talk shows on television, and said that it was because of a, a video, and it actually it was a video trailer, and lied repeatedly. And then remember when Bo Bergdahl was rescued by Barbara Obama? Uh, Susan Rice said that Bo Bergdahl served with honor and distinction. The current president, Donald Trump, calls Bergdahl a traitor. You can sort it out for yourself. Um, but I wanted to just take a moment and uh, let you know what it costs people for Bo Bergdahl to decide he didn't want to serve once he got over to Afghanistan and walked off from his from his uh, group he was serving with there. And what happened was, uh, as is typical of our military, we go looking for those that have disappeared, been killed, or whatever. We don't leave our dead. So they began to search for Bergdahl. And so... Staff Sergeant Clayton Bowen, 29, of San Antonio, Texas, and Private First Class Morris Walker, 23, of Chapel Hill, were killed by a roadside bomb in Paktika province on August 18, 2009, while trying to find Mr. Bergdahl. They were a part of Mr. Bergdahl's uh, infantry unit. And... Uh, then Staff Sergeant Curtis, uh, Kurt Curtis, 27, of Murray, Utah, died on August 22nd, same province in Afghanistan, a wound suffered when he was shot uh, looking for Mr. Bergdahl. Adrian, uh, and then we have... Uh, Another gentleman, 2nd Lieutenant Darren Andrews, 34 of Dallas, Texas, September 4th, same province, an IED blew him up and while he was in his vehicle and a rocket-propelled grenade. Staff, Star Staff Sergeant Michael Murphy, free, not fee, 25 of Snyder, Texas, died September 6th 
in same province <clears throat> being wounded by an IED. And Matthew Martinek of DeKalb, Illinois, was seriously wounded and died later. Same type of injuries. Uh, and in addition to these six that died, uh, four others were seriously wounded. So uh, Bergdahl walks away, I believe, with a $10,000 fine. And now his lawyers are going to appeal because he doesn't get his health benefits for the rest of his life. Unbelievable. And, of course, you remember his cute uh, sissy father and his, uh, looked like his mother was one of those women that is, that is uh, beat into submission and held hostage in a home. I don't know whether you remember her. Kind of a pretty lady, but just beat, looked beat down. And her husband, uh, kind of a hippie-looking dude, right, had his hair pulled back. Remember that guy? And when it, did he give a little? Uh, he did give a little Muslim shout, didn't he? Get a, let him give me a shout out to the boys over at the mosque. Just made you uh, sick to be uh, to have that guy be in the same. You know, when people say I'm an American, it just makes you sick that you're part of that group when you see people like that. But uh, Bo Bergdahl, so uh, his name will be remembered uh, for a long time. And so will Susan Rice. Is that ghetto gal? I, I don't know how that ghetto babe got got into the White House. But just, a, you know, all you'd have to do is tease her hair out a little bit. She'd look like a crack babe. She actually talked like one, right? If she opened her mouth, you knew she was lying to you. Susan Rice. Uh, amazing. Uh, amazing people. Uh, disgusting Americans along with uh, our uh, head of the military, Barbara Obama. Well, um, the, what is worse, or what, I, I don't know what, maybe worse isn't the, uh, the proper, let me back up and just say we have six dead Americans, four wounded, and then we let, remember we, we didn't just get the guy back. We had to trade for him. You remember that? And we let five terrorists out of Gitmo go. And as far as intelligence can tell, uh, those guys are all still terrorists today. All we did is release them back to their no good behavior instead of just lining them up over there against the wall. Now, if th those have been Americans in an Afghan prison, they would have just shot them through the head. We should have done that to them. So I mentioned this last week, and I'm going to mention it again next, uh, because next Saturday, a week from today, is Veterans Day. And my friend Jerry Sebum, who I've traveled to Vietnam with, he and his wife Deanne a number of times smuggling Bibles to the Hmong people, Jerry uh, went to Vietnam as a lieutenant, I believe, and was there just a very short time and uh, lost an eye, got shot in the face, and uh, today has a glass eye. They did a pretty good job. Uh, it looks pretty decent, but he just got, he's working with one eye. So he sent this to me, and uh, I told him I'm going to read it on the radio, so he sent me an email this week thanking me. He, he lives in Sacramento, he and his wife, and they run a little mortgage business, and but his real uh, interest is helping veterans get the benefits that have been denied them unrighteously. He says, if you were ever in combat and were the last person to pull up the zipper on a body bag of your fellow a fallen comrade in arms, you would never think to be this reckless in your attitude towards the American flag. It just would not and could not be done. He's referring to the athletes and despicable human beings that are now comprising much of pro sports. These happen to be in the NFL, the football league. If these fine athletes, Jerry says, want to put up or shut up, 
If these fine athletes want to put up or shut up, then rather than taking a knee, they should just not show up for work. Protest the job. Just tell the tell Jerry Jones with the Cowboys, go screw yourself. We're not coming to work because we're not coming because they sing the national anthem and all the flag and just just do a no show. Boycott your job, right? But these guys are too much of a sissy for that. So they want to go and make some little, uh, actually, I just can't say it on the radio. I'm sorry. It just, they disgust me so bad. So Jerry Sebum is, is a passing along the request to boycott the NFL on maybe you're already boycott. I haven't watched any games this year and I, I am, I'm done. I, even if they straighten up, I'm done. It's over for me. Uh, the NFL boycott is planned for November 12th. That's the day after Veterans Day. Veterans Day weekend, if you want to look at it that way. They're asking for a boycott of all football telecasts, all fans, all ticket holders are asked to stay away from attending or viewing any NFL games on November 12th, Sunday. Let the NFL play to empty stadiums, eat their own hot dogs. Uh, they have a right to protest if they want to, whatever they want to protest. But during the national anthem is not the time or the venue. They show an utter lack of patriotism and total res disrespect for our veterans living and dead and everything for which they put their lives on the line for. I was looking this last week, I was looking at YouTube clips that had as a topic Veterans Day. And, oh, man, if you want to get a, a sobering wake-up call to what this is all about, you should look at some of those actual film clips of veterans, whether they were in Afghanistan, Iraq, the beaches of Europe, taking the Normandy beach, all those, all those kind of clips, Vietnam, very intense, very humbling, uh, very sobering stomach turning. And then you think of these guys that are, are prima donnas on Sunday, whether they're in the N NBA or whether they're in the NFL or wh wherever they are, uh, we have the same thing. We got the Golden State Warriors at the best basketball team on earth right now and really are sick when it comes to patriotism, including their coach, Steve Kerr, by the way, whose father was assassinated at American University in Lebanon by Hamas. In the, in the university, they came in and shot him through the head. And we still got a liberal, uh, Steve Kerr. I wonder what his dad would think of that. His dad was probably a liberal. And uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, later in the show about their disrespecting of the White House because they don't like the guy that happens to be the president of the United States. So it's like, oh, well, if I don't like the president, then I, you know, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to the White House and and be honored. And now they're blaming it on Trump. Anyway, I'll get to that in a little bit. We have a new sponsor, and um, it's called Elite Universal Security, or I for short I call it Elite Security. And uh, they are taking over much of the security of Marysville. Uh, they are around my house. Uh, they've been hired. Uh, and they oversee much of the day around the area of Walgreens and CVS because the police don't respond there anymore. They don't think it's important to stop panhandlers and people from harassing particular females and intimidating them. I was over there this week to get, I was going into Walgreens to score me some drugs. And I went in, I went walking up in there and a guy was there and he was under the influence and he started to walk up to me and I recognized him because I saw him at the booking counter at the Yuba County jail as I was walking out from doing a class and they were releasing him and he was sober and they were sending him. The judge was sending him instead of like 
a prison was sending him to a rehab. And I high-fived him, and I said, man, don't leave the rehab. Finish the program. So he was, and everybody's encouraging him, the, the correctional officers. So this guy was standing in front of Walgreens three weeks later, out of his mind. And he started to ask me for a taco or something. And I said, what do you, and, and finally he recognized me. I said, what in the world are you doing here? And he said, oh, I said, the last time I saw you was at the booking counter in Yuba County Jail, and you were heading to a rehab. He said, I left. Uh, all you homeless advocates out there, uh, why don't you just uh, call me up, and I'll get this guy hooked up so you can move him into your bedroom and uh, give him a tune-up, because I know, like, Scott Mitnick's of the world, and all you folks, Nancy O'Hare, I know you've got a bleeding heart for him. And uh, it doesn't matter whether we put him into rehab, he just leaves. Just like a ball, you know, and uh, you fill a plastic ball with air and you push it down under the water in the swimming pool and up it comes, you let it go, it pops right up out of the water. So Elite Security is, is providing a little cover for you, like when you want to go in to get your coffee at Starbucks or go into the CVS, they run interference for you like a blocker in the NFL knocking people down so you can get in there and get your coffee. So elite security and, uh, but here's the, they're out there, uh, located on all of us, but they serve the, they, they actually serve Yuba Sutter area and Chico and Redding. And you can go on their website at elite dot API hyphen academy.com. The API is a cool thing. They got this school out there. If you're 18 years of age and older and they will train you and how to handle weapons, they'll get you a permit, and they will get you start started in the security business. Why is that significant? I'll tell you why. Because you can't, you can't start in law enforcement until I think you're 21. But they will begin to give you some prep courses and get you started, and you can you could work with them, and you can get all these courses out of the way. And I was talking to Monty Hecker, who's the owner of uh, – elite security and API Academy. And he said, Lou, there's a lot of, uh, folks that have gone into law enforcement. They're now in law enforcement serving somewhere up and down the Valley because they got their start with us. So go on the website and you can check. It's just a cool website. I was checking it out yesterday and elite E L I T E dot API hyphen academy.com. And you can check it out and see what those courses are. I think the next course they got coming up is on tasers that you can tap into, how to use a taser. And uh, you can dial them up at 749-0280. That's 749-0280. Or you can just Google them, Elite Security or Elite Universal Security. And uh, you can check that out. And... Um, they are now one of our monthly sponsors and I like them. I liked them before they became a monthly sponsor. I wouldn't have allowed them to be a monthly sponsor because they actually are more responsive than the Marysville police are in my neighborhood. I don't got anything against the Marysville police officers themselves. It's just the policies that they're not enforcing the laws in the city of Marysville like we used to. And I know something about that because I used to be the chaplain for the city of Marysville police department for 12 years. And I know what the policies were. In fact, I'm still in touch with some of the cops that used to serve there. So uh, we're going to take a break for a couple minutes, and we'll be right back. Carter thought his life was over when he landed in jail. What he didn't know was that all the pieces of an intricate puzzle had come together for just such a time. This Christmas, experience the great love that motivates such planning and purpose to reach each and every one of us. Creative Light Theatre presents the original modern musical, The Ripple Effect. Featuring a powerhouse cast of 16 actors and 15 original songs that pulse with passion and reveal the deepest thoughts of people in crisis. This musical drama shows the purpose in suffering and grants us a glimpse of what goes on in the heart of God. The Ripple Effect world premiere is December 8th through 12th, 7 p.m. nightly. 
at the Embassy Theater at Glad Tidings, Highway 99 and Eager Road in Yuba City. Admission is free. Experience the epic lengths God will go to for the love of one person. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. Well, well, well. Liberal pig writer Matt Taibbi is finally getting his comeuppance. But it says less about him and more about all his enabling friends in the left-wing media that it took so damn long for his past attacks on women to catch up with him. The former Rolling Stone reporter is on a promotional tour for his new book on the NYPD and the Eric Garner chokehold case. He's been a darling of the radical social justice left thanks to his unhinged Trump bashing and anti-conservative screeds. But in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein sex scandal, watchdogs on the internet are now using the opportunity to confront Taibbi with long-standing disgust over his treatment of women in the workplace and in the public square. These aren't simply anonymous, unsubstantiated allegations. Taibbi himself bragged about sexually assaulting women and soliciting oral and anal sex from female employees in Russia in one of his nonfiction books written with co-author Mark Ames. Let me read an excerpt in which they mock their female manager named Kara. Quote, you're always trying to force Masha and Sveta under the table to give you blowjobs. It's not funny. They don't think it's funny, Kara complained. But it is funny, Matt said. We've been pretty rough on our girls. We'd asked our Russian staff to flash their asses or breasts for us. We tell them that if they wanted to keep their jobs, they'd have to perform unprotected anal sex with us. Nearly every day, we asked our female staff if they approved of anal sex. That was a fixation of ours. Quote, can I f*** you in the ass, huh? I mean, without a rubber. Is that okay? It was all part of the fun, unquote. Reporters for the Chicago Reader, NPR, and Yahoo News have picked up on Taibbi's perverse sexual exploits, which he now says were all made up. I know all about this vulgarian seething hatred of women, and unlike so many of the liberal women and men belatedly coming forward to condemn him, I didn't stay silent about it. In 2009, he wrote a blog post about me titled, Teabagging Michelle Malkin. Let me read it. Michelle Malkin, quote, is just a mean little dunce who wedged herself into a nicely paying career as a GOP spokesclown, and she's going to ride that gig for as long as it keeps gas in her minivan. And that's fine, good for her, but that doesn't make her readable. However, this move of hers to spearhead the teabag movement really adds an element to her writing that wasn't there before. Now when I read her stuff, I imagine her narrating her text, book on tape style, with a big, hairy set of balls in her mouth. It vastly improves her prose. Instead of condemnation when I called him out, other liberal bloggers laughed and applauded Taibbi's degradation. Because after all, I am an outspoken conservative woman in the media, and I deserve it. These routine attacks by sexist men did not stop me then, and will not ever stop me now from using my voice and platform. Taibbi is a pathetic waste of time and space. My message is for all those who enabled him for so long. Spare me all your newfound solidarity against sexism. Confront your own double standards when it comes to rampant misogyny against conservative women. And instead of decrying the culture of misogyny, face the facts. You are the... Welcome back. It seems like about every few hours, another woman is coming forward to say they got raped, molested, or something, something by uh, some kind of a producer, actor, uh, media leader, newscaster. It's unbelievable. Do you think, are you like blown away by this? It's like, uh, it's like an earthquake. 
just shaking buildings down. And it's disgusting. You know, these are the people that actually uh, blew a gasket because there was an old video or a recording of Donald Trump using some crass language, right? Language. But didn't rape anybody, didn't grab anybody, molest anybody, grope anybody, ask anybody for any sexual favors, right? And there's just, it's unbelievable. People are resigning from Amazon. People are getting fired from their jobs all of a sudden. But the fact is, for many, many, many years, people say this, they knew this was going on. Why now? Isn't it fascinating? Why now? All these people quitting, getting fired, uh, their name being shamed. And now boys, young boys are coming out saying that Kevin Spacey, you know, Spacey's dad was a Nazi pedophile. Did you know that? You didn't know that? Yeah. It's just now coming out. And so his brother and he were probably molested by his father, but he's been having sex with men and boys left and right. And all the while, it's Hollywood, the very people that are doing all this uh, funky stuff that, is, that are saying that it's the Republicans that are having a war on women. Now, I don't know what the war on women compri is comprised of. It's like, what would actually be a war on woman, a, a women? Well, if you're like, what's worse than laying hands on them like that, right? Unwanted hands. Unbelievable. So I'm just wondering, you know, uh, you know, now, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of seeping into politics. Oh, we know that the molests have been going on and the sexual impropriety, but the outing is now, uh, coming out of politics. One of the assemblymen in Sacramento now is getting called out. And I think it's just a beginning there. So we're moving from show business to politics. And then the next step, uh, is I'm thinking we're going to have a local experience in the Yuba Sutter area when people get emboldened to just expose people that have been uh, doing bizarre stuff here. A lady talked to me recently and uh, married to a law enforcement official who pressured her into having a threesome with somebody from the DA's office. It's really not against the law, right? Is that what you think the deputy DA ought to be doing is having a threesome with somebody and then prosecuting other people for improper sexual behavior, but she's having a threesome and then convincing the gal to go have sex with her other husband, her husband. We, we're in trouble here. People, everybody's going to work. They got their little suits on nice dress, but they, their life, their moral life is a train wreck. And the problem I always tell kids in juvenile hall, I said, the worst problem was, was not you committing a crime. I said, I'm not justifying that and condoning that. The worst thing you did is putting yourself before a system that is riddled with people with sinful behavior and crazy behavior. And they're going to make a judgment over your life. They're going to be prosecuting you and their life is a train wreck. That, that should cause people some pause if they think they want to violate the law and put yourself in a court of law in our community. The Bible has a lot to say about corrupt judges and people that are in charge. But we may, you know, if, if we're blessed in Yuba Sutter County, we'll see finally some prosecution of people in power and then people, other people will begin to talk and it will come out, uh, in the depositions and in court, some of the illicit activities of those people that are actually in charge of running our two communities here. One of the s sponsors of uh, this show is the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots. 
I like the Tea Party people. I like I like the Tea Party movement. It isn't what it was when it first started out, but it still can have impact. Uh, it put a lot of people in office. Some people fulfilled their their rhetoric. You know, lived up to their rhetoric. Other people did not. But it changed a number of folks uh, in one of the midterm elections under uh, President Barbara Obama. And uh, so the Sutter Buse Tea Party Patriots uh, today is meeting. That group is meeting at the Church of Glad Tidings Highway 99 in Eager Road, or what they call 1179 Eager Road. They meet on the first and third Monday nights of each month. The meeting starts at 6.30, doors open at 6. This Monday night is significant because uh, Nathan Black, auditor-controller of Sutter County, who was elected to office after Robert Stark retired, after over 30 years of service to Sutter County, and after being ripped off by the politicians, the supervisors stole uh, nearly uh, $400,000 from him and uh, harassed him and uh, tried to carpet bomb him politically and he defended himself and because like dr cassidy on the other side of the river was not guilty instead of just tucking his tail and resigning he fought them and won but they wouldn't pay his legal fees so anyway stark finally decided to retire after 30 some years think may 31 32 years and uh, Nathan Black was elected, and many people uh, were hoping, many people in power didn't want any financial oversight. That's what the auditor, auditor controller provides, is financial oversight for me and you, constituents. Why? Because the, our founding fathers believed that government <clears throat> had sinful human beings in it, and that was a bad thing, so let's keep it as small as possible. But while you were sleeping, government has infiltrated every aspect of your life, controls everything, taxes everything, and it's completely corrupt. It's hard to find an honest person in government that isn't self-serving and isn't a liar. Nathan Black is our lone elected representative to oversee other people's deeds and misdeeds. Thankfully, he's an honest person and a a bright person. We could have voted in somebody else that was a kiss ass and just went along, right, to get along. So Nathan is talking this Monday night at the Tea Party Patriots about the the health of the county he'll probably talk about calpers which is a topic that he is probably one of the most knowledgeable outspoken and transparent polit- people in politics or people in government that we have thank god and uh and he and i heard him say that he was just appointed to a, a statewide committee by uh, to provide some uh, input on uh, activities that are going on up and down California, which is an honor, right? It shows that people are <clears throat> recognizing some of his qualities. So <clears throat> the pension system will destroy Sutter County, Yuba County, Marysville, and Yuba City, as, long as, as well as uh, – other entities up and down the state so it's an important topic calpers the other thing you may talk about is the uh fiasco of sutter county sutter county uh wanting to spend millions of your dollars on home on homeless thinking they're going to eradicate homeless i'm going to talk more about that later and talk about the five million dollar club which is a group of 29 individuals earning five million dollars a year in total that are spending an inordinate that in all of us, that means too much time uh, on a handful of people that are vagrants 
or people that have fallen on bad times in their life, but they there's lots of solutions and they're not taking them. I'm going to talk about that later. But I want to talk about <clears throat> the Tea Party Patriots a bit. The Tea Party Patriots, I don't know what the original name was, Sutter Butte's Tea Party Patriots. Do you remember what the original name was when they were those both counties together? We started out, we had a Yuba and kind of Yuba. It was all one. Let's just call it the Yuba Sutter Tea Party, right? Just for sake of talking. They started, and like a lot of groups, uh, somebody got a bean up their nose, and I think it was Carla and Larry Verga, and they split off and started a Sutter group, Sutter, uh, Sutter County group. So we had a Yuba County group, Sutter County group. And somehow, the, the Yuba County group think the Vergas sabotaged them. That's their story. And so the IRS came. You remember when Lois Lerner went before the House, the House subcommittee and took the Fifth Amendment? She wanted to talk a little bit, but not too much. So she half talked, half didn't talk. <clears throat> and she ended up stepping down from her job with full retirement, but she was a, a liar along with all the rest of those Democrats. And it, they remember that was the situation where Obama uh, woke up in the morning and said he had no idea what was going on with the IRS and read all about it in the newspaper, had no idea that they were persecuting conservative organizations, hundreds of conservative organizations throughout the United States, whether they were church type organizations or, or voter organizations uh, to make sure that the vote was going to be accurate or whether T if they had Patriot in their name, if they had tea party in their name, they got persecuted. So at that time, the, uh, the Yuba County group was applying for a 501 C four. That was what that's a nonprofit educational group. They applied for 501 C four and, uh, they, they weren't getting anywhere. They submitted all the paperwork, and they kept getting more and more questions, like we want to know all the people that donate to your organization and want to know all their background information. It's more and more ridiculous information. Now, I know something about this because I've formed, I've applied and started a number of 501c3 organizations. They were religious organizations, so I know the paperwork, the 1023 paperwork, form 10, the whole packet. I've done it state, federal. I got, I got this. So 501c4 is just a different category, but they're usually not that you don't have to wait too long to get, uh, okayed if you're legitimate. And so this tea party got harassed, 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 harassed. And finally the, the, uh, the IRS, uh, took control of their money and took $8,000 of their, of the local tea party in Yuba County's money. And then they had to, they had a beautiful, I guess, a float, a boat float uh, that they had to, you know, if you're a nonprofit and you close your non, you close up like a church closes, they need to donate their, they can't take the money themselves. They got to need to donate the money to another nonprofit. So this nonprofit, when they said, you're not, you're not a nonprofit, we're not okay in your status. In fact, we're going to take your money because you owe us taxes because the money that was donated to you, we're going to tax that. So I think they took around $8,000 from them. And uh, so then they had to get rid of their float, donate it to another nonprofit. So last week when I, when I talked about the article where Jeff Sessions now has settled with, there's a bunch of organizations that have been suing the federal government and the IRS because of, they, they were persecuted and they were harassed. And, uh, so Jeff Sessions is settling with them. So I contacted a person that I knew was involved with the original tea party. And I said, are you guys, are you guys going to get a settlement? And, and she sent me an email and she said, Lou, we were actually listed as number 423, number 423 on the hit list by the IRS were listed as one of the groups that they were after just little old tea party in Yuba County. Is that amazing? You think the IRS isn't up in your business? And when this happened, I've dealt with the IRS for years because I used to do accounting 
And uh, and I've done I've I bet had business where we were fully audited and worked with an IRS agent, and I've had basically a good experience. I I don't think anybody likes to get a notice from the IRS that they're inquiring about something something, right? That you made a mistake or they want to know more information. Anytime you get that that envelope in the mail, I I always get a little cold. I get a little clammy because I know it's going to mean work for me, and I don't want to have to. I don't need any extra work. But when the when you realize that the IRS is a political hit machine, that is a freaky thing because they got all your business so back there recorded. They they know where they can just dip in and take the money right out of your checking account. And when you go to the bank to get some money, they say you don't have any money. That's how intense this gets. So this lady says to me, Lou, we were number four twenty three on the IRS hit list as shown because they're they're uh on the freedom of information act with the attorneys for all these organizations, they are getting in, they are getting the documents from the IRS that were secret. And so she said, we lost our checking account. We lost everything. And so the Yuba County group closed down. They just finally just closed their doors and thought, forget about it. What's left now, uh, the one legitimate group in the area is the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots, and it's the remnant of those two groups, and it's what we have left. So I want to encourage you to support that group. And you think, well, why should we support that group? Let me ask you this. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, I met with a couple. They called me on the show here. They wanted to buy a a gun ticket here the other day, they listened to the show. And so I went to their house and they said, Oh yeah, <coughs> we used to go to the tea party. And then when they split, we just gave up and quit. It's too bad. You know, when that happens, it happens in churches too. churches split, people get discouraged and they give up. Well, it's, here's the problem. When we all give up and we just sit around the house on the boob tube and we let politicians, uh, make decisions over their life with no one looking over the shoulder. You know what happens? Don't you, you get screwed. They take your money, they spend it. I get a kick out of politicians that are so anxious to spend my money on things that are stupid. I think, Hey, if you want to do stupid, spend your own money. Come, why don't you come out of your own wallet? You're getting 200,000, 180,000, 250,000, 300,000. You're not willing to spend any of your own money. Why don't you, if you feel so bad for these people, take one in. Nobody's taking me up on that deal. It's just too easy to take other people's money. It's called theft, right? So the tea party has kind of a, a difficult history. I'm, I'm hoping that the IRS will make right with the local Yuba County tea party. Maybe they will, they will rejoin the Sutter people. Uh, the Virgas are finally gone and, and maybe they're starting, they got their own little group. They're, they start one group after another. So, uh, maybe, or maybe they'll start their own group in Yupa County, which would be fine, but hopefully they'll get their money back that the IRS stole from them. Isn't that something when the government steals your money? I mean, it's one thing taxes legalize stealing. Then it's another thing when they just come in and they just dip in and like, take your money, right? They just say, we want all that money. Cause it ain't, yeah, people gave it. It's amazing. People donated their money for a for a good cause and the IRS just came and took that money Obama's group right wow I, I just I'm just still it just blows it still blows my mind right I got to deal with you everybody's dealing with the IRS you got to file your tax returns and you got to respond to them and hey do you have a choice you don't have a choice unless you want to go to jail you want to just say shove it or something you'll go to jail uh, that's the way that is it's a bummer so did you just see, uh, did, did you watch uh, Donna Brazil's book? Have you heard about Donna Brazil's book? Yeah. You read about it. I haven't read it, but D Donna Brazil's book came out and basically she just says, you know, it's amazing that the, you know, the Republicans have been saying, we, we don't, we want everybody to have voter ID. We want an honest vote. Democrats said, oh, you're just trying to, uh, get people to not vote exclude people from voting and all the while the entire election was a scam the entire democrat primary election was a done deal i mean i think us in the republican side or the conservative side knew that 
But now Donna Brazil said it was a, uh, who's one of the top people in the Democrat Party, said the whole thing was a scam. Bernie, Bernie probably won, probably should have won. They just scammed it and controlled it and jerked everybody around. Clinton controlled uh, the entire Democrat finance machine. It was just totally a rigged election. That's the way. It, remember, Donald Trump said that all along. People thought, oh, he's just a nutcase. Honestly, people, you know, and here's the sad thing about liberals. They don't even care. They, they don't even care. So, yeah, so she broke the law. So, she, you know, I, I'm just, you know, when I, I did this uh, about a year or two ago, I listed all the people that have died that were close friends of the Clintons. How many close friends of yours have died in a real strange manner? Maybe anybody? They have, you can look at 40, 50 people died around the Clintons in strange manner. Run over, run over by a train, shot killed in Starbucks. It's unbelievable. We'll be right back. I fail to understand why we would deprive the future of America with the history of hope and promises that we've just taught. I don't know you why you would deprive black America of this heritage. The message that men who did not share the same color of your skin at the founding of this nation was fighting for your future and now we make them out to be criminals they gave us a hope and a promise they said the abolition of slavery in 1787 seemed to be going on in the united states in 1787 slavery and time will not be a speck on our country in 1789 it is hoped that by expressing a national disapprobation of this trade, we may destroy it and say ourselves from reproaches and our posterity, the imbecility attended on a country that filled with slaves. How have we, how have we saved our future from reproach when we keep, keep these wounds alive with lies and distortions? It's about time we stop rewriting our history. It's about time we start teaching truth. It can begin with you. As a student of this truth here at Liberty First University, that's why we're doing what we're doing. So that you can now be the purveyors of truth. So that we can pick up this mantle. We can take back generations of people who are forcibly being divided by false pretenses. By manipulations and distortions. We can remedy the disease of hate that has affected America today. And the cure is truth. All right. Well, just a couple of weeks before the election uh, between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, this is what Hillary wrote Donna Brazil, who took over the head of the Democrat National Committee from Debbie Wasserman Schultz. When uh, it was revealed that she was uh, complicit in working against Bernie Sanders for Hillary Clinton. So I'll have to, I have to delete a couple words here, but you'll get it. If so, this is what Hillary says to Donna Brazil, the new chair of the Democrat national committee. If that effing bass wins, we all hang from nooses Lauer, In other words, Matt Lauer. I don't know why that's cons the newscaster Lauer's finished. And if I lose, if I lose, it's all on your heads for screwing this up. You better fix this H S H I T that now I know if you're a Democrat, you love this right here and it's totally okay with you, but that's just the type of woman, a bitter, uh, bisexual, another, you know, everybody focuses on bill assaulting people. I think Hillary has her own list of ladies that she's assaulted. So unbelievable. It's unbelievable. At the, at the, uh, commercial break there, you heard, uh, Chris Ann Hall who talking about her education of people on the constitution. Chris Ann Hall was one of the original folks involved with the tea party she was an attorney for the state of florida and basically was told <clears throat> if you're going to stick with the tea party you can't stick with us that's how powerful the democrats were 
So she decided, along with her husband, who at that time was pastoring, that they would just trust God, that they were doing what was right, they were promoting the truth, and she would leave her job uh, rather than getting fired as a state attorney in Florida and uh, would begin to work with the Tea Party and educate people around the country about what the Constitution said because the education system in the United States doesn't teach it, and so if people don't realize what their rights are, they lose their rights. Or if they know what they are and won't do anything about it, you sit home <clears throat> and get fat and sloppy and look like a doughboy or a dough girl, you end up losing your rights. Todd Wood, a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy <clears throat> who flew special operations helicopters supporting SEAL Team 6, Delta Force, and others, uh, after leaving the military, uh, he pursued his other passion, finance, and he spent 18 years on Wall Street uh, and later doing some writing. My computer jumped. He's written some uh, novels. He's a contributor to Fox Business, Newsmax TV, Moscow Times, New York Post, and National Review. And uh, I want to read something he wrote, which I think is an eye-opener. He says, I know of no white person alive today in the United States who has ever legally owned a black slave or any slave for that matter. Almost 700,000 mostly white men died 160 years ago to end slavery. Jim Crow ended. Those are the types of laws that were uh, Jim Crow means the, the style or type of law that was built in discrimination against black folks. Jim Crow ended generations ago, yet black America, for the most part, is still locked in inner-city gang violence and economic hardship. Why? Is it because, because America is racist? Is it because of some overhanging white supremacy? Is it because of the Illuminati? No, unfortunately, it is because of black culture and the adoption of the Democrat Party government dependency. We have just had eight years of the first black president. Black athletes and entertainers routine, routinely earn multi-million dollar incomes. I can easily name several black billionaires without even trying too hard. A large percentage of black America is very successful, but it is not enough. Too many black youth are being left behind. And it is no one but black America's fault. No one can solve this problem but black America. No one can throw enough money at it. We've tried that. Black America needs to look in the mirror and stop blaming others, especially white people. I'm obviously white and conservative, and I served in the military, which during my time was as colorblind as it could be. I can also honestly say I don't give a damn what color your skin is, neither do any of my friends. I do care about your actions. Blacks are around 15% of the population. Depending on what study you look at, they commit around 40 to 50% of violent crime in America. Of course, there's going to be a problem with police. And of course, there are some bad policemen. However, those bad apples do not kill black people statistically any more often than they kill white people. Even Harvard University said that recently. If you were a cop and you had to work in a neighborhood infested with crime and murder, wouldn't you act differently than in a neighborhood where there was little crime? The most effective thing black America could do to improve its relationship with police is to significantly reduce violent crime where they live. Yes, that means change the culture of where you live and your community. I, for one, am tired of being blamed. I am tired of dealing with people who only wants something from somebody else. I don't oppress anyone. I don't hold anybody down. I'm tired of getting on, on the D.C. Metro and seeing white people being harassed by roaming gangs of black youth with their pants down around their knees. Yes, you want a white person uncomfortable? That makes me uncomfortable. 
It's our nation capital, nation's capital, and it's embarrassing to me. Blacks have nothing but opportunity in America. Try finding the same opportunity anywhere else in the world. If you were born in America, you've won life's economic lottery. Take advantage of it. The problem is this generation has been taught an agenda of cultural Marxism by our education system. They've been taught to be a victim, and it's still going on. All you have to do is watch the young black female student at Yale screaming at the college president to understand that. Blacks in America don't even know how good they got it. Don't kneel when my anthem is played. Too many people died for that flag. You are free to protest, but not then. I am free to not watch or pay to watch you play if you do that. The NFL should make it a rule that you stand for the national anthem. There is no free speech to disobey a private employer on private property. This would solve the problem immediately. The NFL has deeply offended most of America. They will pay an economic and reputational price as they should. We have a real cultural problem in this country, the result of the leftist multicultural agenda. Multi-ethnicity is perfect and should be encouraged. Having more than one American culture is destroying the country. But then again, that is what the left wants. Do black lives matter? It is your job to determine if this is a racist rant or just a review of the factual data. So here's some data that should get your attention out there today. I want you to imagine if all the blacks suddenly left America, what kind of impact would it have on the country? That's about 13.3% of the total U.S. population, between that and 15%. If blacks left, the amount of po poverty would drop 34% the prison population would go down by 37%. Welfare recipients would go down by 42%. Gang members would reduce by 53%. Chlamydia cases for you and all of us, that's sexually transmitted disease, would go down 54%. Homelessness would go down 57%. Syphilis would go down 58%. AIDS and HIV would go down by 65%. Gonorrhea would go down by 69%. Average ACT scores would go up by 5.5 points. Average IQ would go up by 7.4 points. Uh, average a SAT scores would go up almost 100 uh, points. The average income for Americans would go up over $20,000 a year. But Democrats would lose 76% of their voting base. Just a thought. I received, uh, or Santos received a phone call today. I want to transition to talk about people <clears throat> that we use the term homeless now to describe drug addicts, vagrants, mentally ill, da da da. We just describe them of what, where they're living, not anything about their life. So he says, Santos writes, he's over running the board today. He says, a listener. Uh, from Marysville called to say you were right on your comments about homeless people who walk out of a rehab. He said uh, he has walked out of several rehabs, but he finally got hooked up with Dr. Cassidy and recently completed a 180 day program. And now he's clean and has a good job and has a better outlook on life. He said he used to depend on people feeling sorry for him. And he used to be a bleeding heart himself he said to keep telling the truth about people that are homeless. Now, I brought today an item that Brent Andy Vasquez, Andy says I mispronounce his name. He says, Lou, my name is Vasquez. I said, well, that's a gringo pronunciation of your Mexican name. I said, are you a gringo or are you Mexican? He says, he didn't answer that question, but he stuck with Vasquez. So I'm going to say most, if you pronounce it, I took Spanish in high school and college is be Vasquez, but Andy likes it Vasquez. So let's in America, you can have it like you want it, right? You can have a pickle on it or you can take the pickle off. So he gave me a few years ago, this is September three, 2013. 
Some of the $5 million club from Sutter County put together the Sutter Yuba Mental Health Services Resource Listing, and then it has, you. this is just Yuba County. Or maybe Andy just put that in there. Whether it's Yuba or Sutter, let's just say this. This is 30 pages. 30 pages. Did you hear me? That's 3030, three times 10 pages of resources in our community. All kinds of stuff. Places to live, places to eat, places to get a house, rehabs, clinics, all up and down the counties and the state, prevention services, employment, even includes the Clusa County, 25, 24 hours crisis, drug and alcohol outpatient, four families, pathways, options for change, first steps, Salvation Army Depot, Feather Men's Center, pathways, reentry, oh, here's this residential long term treatment, Salvation Army Depot, Salvation Army Stockton, Salvation Army San Francisco, Salvation Army Chico, Twin Cities Crisis Center, The Well. Transitional housing, reentry office, men and women, buddy's house, victory outreach, winds of change, on and on and on. Methadone, where you can get clothes, free clothes, free food, free, 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 free. Can you say free? F R E E, free, 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 free. Oh, yeah. PTSD support groups, tribal people that got a little engine in them. They can go out there and get some free stuff, free. If you need some, if you're handicapped, you can get free stuff at Freed, F-R-E-E-D, Center for Independent Living. Nice group, great group. All kinds of churches listed here that can help you, right? All 30 pages of stuff. That ain't good enough. No, nope, that ain't good enough. All kinds of uh, other types of handouts aren't good enough. Let's see. I cut this thing out. I... <laughs> Here's a guy in the, uh, let's see, Wednesday, November 1, Appeal Democrat on the forum page. Richard Hippie Peters, he writes, he's 54. He refers to himself, or the paper says he's a mechanic. He doesn't look like he's doing much mechanic to me. What do you like about the Yuba Sutter area? I think they should take one of those old abandoned buildings, this is what he, this is at, as a, this is his response to what do you like? I, he's going to give us some advice now. This dude looks homeless to me. I think they should take one of those old abandoned buildings and they have a lot of them down there in Marysville and turn it into a homeless day center where people can do laundry, have coffee and play cards. Well, hallelujah to you. He said, I'm from Flagstaff and all the homeless from Phoenix would come over to Flagstaff because it's cool up there and there's a homeless day center. That needs to be done right here. Well, yes, sir. Why don't we put a little swimming pool and a spa and a little uh, hot tub and uh, along with them chowers. Uh, he says, uh, he said, we moved here because our daughters work over there at Thunder Valley Casino. Well, maybe you should have moved on into the, down to Thunder Valley, got taken care of. So anyway, that's all. Uh, Watch the uh, crime briefs for Richard Hippie Peters, 54. So I was, I've been watching the crime briefs and I've been seeing a, uh, one of them homeless people are just like good upstanding citizens that just, you know, I had one of these Christian guys that goes down there and feeds people. And, uh, he said, the reason we got all these homeless is like downturning the economy. I thought, geez, Louise, that's ridiculous. So we got Nathan Myers here. He's 24. I wonder, I don't know whether he's got two legs and two limbs or not and can, can look straight you in the eye or can see across the street. I don't know, but he's considered homeless in Marysville. He was arrested by the Yuba city police. Uh, it's interested. <laughs> I get a kick out of this Yuba city police. They list him as a resident homeless resident of Marysville, right? <laughs> No address, no address, but they said, no, he ain't from here. That dude ain't from here, that Nathan Myers. So at, at 3.37 p.m. on November 1 at 900 block of Tharp Road, they arrested him on suspicion of receiving known sto stolen property and being a felony fugitive, and they booked him over there at Sutter County Jail. Now, that boy, they said, no, 
We know what a Yuba City resident looks like, and that boy looks like he, he's from Marysville. <laughs> That's hilarious. I get a kick out of the Yuba City police. They're fun. That's a fun deal right there. Okay, here's another one. Uh, this is uh, from Tuesday, October 31, and I've got David Pyle. He's 57, and he's homeless, and he was arrested by Yuba County Sheriff at 12.20 p.m. on October 27, it says here. And they arrested him at the sheriff's office on suspicion of rape by force. Well, there you have it. Uh, one guy got arrested because he's a felon, and he was uh, he was in possession of. I wonder what he was in. Pos- it doesn't say. I wonder if they're going to arrest somebody for a shopping cart. But this is receiving. I'm um, suspicion of receiving known stolen property. Well, that's stolen. I don't know. They don't say what it is. But David Pyle, he's got rape by force. Now we're getting a little more serious there, but homeless guy. So I think the Appeal Democrat, because they're all for this homeless program, they'll probably start taking that out of there and just they won't say. You know how they won't say? So usually they say he's from the 800 block of Pine Street or 600 block of Scott Street. But I don't know what they're going to say. If, if they're homeless, maybe they'll just take that word out. They won't even say maybe he's like an extraterrestrial, right? And they just leave that blank. So you just have to guess what happened to him. So, uh, anyway, the other thing I was noticing is, uh, I, I ran into this lady at the Yuba County jail and she was trying to figure out how to put some money on a, on a phone card for her husband who just got arrested. I said, Oh, where you guys live here. And she said, Oh, we're from Santa Rosa. And I thought, Oh, that's interesting. And, uh, so, uh, she said, yeah, I don't know how we got into what charges. I, I wasn't quite clear what he'd done, but then I opened the paper and I thought, holy mackerel, man, this guy, they had a little baby and their first baby. And I thought they are going, I thought this guy's not coming home because, uh, they arrested four guys from Santa Rosa that drove over here and they did a home invasion up in Loma Rica to uh to wipe out uh steal all this marijuana and they beat up some people they like thump some people up there and and uh, even one of them got away it sounds like but these guys are in for attempted murder when one lady three guys and one lady and then they think there's a guy on the run but uh still s- search still on for violent home invasion so you know what we have going on i i, I was going to play a clip but i decided not to from siskiyou county and the sheriff up there declared a state of emergency, and they got the National Guard came into Siskiyou County. Siskiyou County, I always think of Mount Shasta being in Shasta County, but it's kind of like Yuba Cities and Sutter County, and then we got Yuba County over here. But Siskiyou County includes the base of Mount Shasta, and it's got kind of that high plains area, and marijuana's growing really good up there. They have like a 1,000 or more plant, uh, plantings, and they had the uh, – I was watching the sheriff on, on this YouTube clip and he was describing how they have organized crime that has moved into their County that is benefiting from this marijuana. And so that's what we got going on here, folks. We got people that are traveling across the state to do a hit job on somebody's property in Loma Rica because they got all this marijuana. And, uh, you know, recently, the supervisors in the County of Yuba have passed a no commercial grow, uh, ordinance. The only problem is it has a flaw in it. If you have a piece of property up there in Yuba County and somebody sneaks in there, the way to get around this is to somebody is to grow on somebody else's property unbeknownst to them. Right? So the question has been brought up is if I have a piece of property, say I got 20 acres of property up there in Yuba County that someday I'm going to build on and I'm busy and life's passing me by six months goes by and all of a sudden the county they spot a grow on my property that I don't know about are they going to take my property or arrest me when I don't even know what's up there so that's a flaw in the ordinance and again if you got a flaw in the ordinance and you're going to have problems so uh is that phone call for me no we're good some somebody complaining all right that's good he said no complaints so far today. The drunk guy hasn't called in a long time. Maybe he passed. He, he may have came to pass. So um, anyway, uh, we're going to talk more about this homeless problem in Yuba City in a little bit. But people are 
you know, I, I run it. The problem is I know too many of them. <laughs> I know too many of them because I meet them in jail. And then, uh, I, you know, in jail, we're doing an amazing job. We're trying to work our rears off to help them n- not come back and leave more prepared to, to get in a place and get in, get off the street, get some food, get some health, you know, get some health and medical and, uh, and get on their feet. Right. But you can't convince something, someone against their own will. And that's what Scott Mitnick, who makes all that money has never got through his head. So we're going to be right back. And, uh, let's see, we got a, we got a half a show left. Hang in there. Carter thought his life was over when he landed in jail. What he didn't know was that all the pieces of an intricate puzzle had come together for just such a time. This Christmas, experience the great love that motivates such planning and purpose to reach each and every one of us. Creative Light Theater presents the original modern musical, The Ripple Effect. Featuring a powerhouse cast of 16 actors and 15 original songs that pulse with passion and reveal the deepest thoughts of people in crisis, this musical drama shows the purpose in suffering and grants us a glimpse of what goes on in the heart of God. The Ripple Effect world premiere is December 8th through 12th, 7 p.m. nightly, at the Embassy Theater at Glad Tidings, Highway 99 and Eager Road in Yuba City. Admission is free. Experience the epic lengths God will go to for the love of one person. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at eterritorial.com Hello Liberty Loving Patriots this is Chris Ann Hall, Liberty's lobbyist and founder of Liberty First University If Samuel Adams were still alive he'd be sure to tune in to Live with Lou every Saturday from 9am to noon right here on KMYC 1410am The Patriot and so should you You can also catch my show Monday through Friday on ctnlifestyle.com. CNN released a hit piece on how President Trump's EPA administrator, Scott Pruitt, will let a mining company destroy pristine Bristol Bay in the Bering Sea of Alaska. Stossel is here. He's with Fox (laughs) Business, and he knows the true story. Tell me. The true story is that Obama's EPA broke precedent, and before this company could even submit an environmental impact statement, which is the standard, they submit it, and then the government says, okay, or no. They said, you can't even submit this report because the regulators had been colluding with groups like the NRDC, these rich environmental right. groups made up mostly of lawyers, and they don't want any mines anywhere. <laughs> if you don't believe it, I have an interview with the guy where I say, well, you approve some mines somewhere? Oh, sure. Well, name one. Uh, I'll get back to you. And they never (laughs) did. So this was the EPA under President Obama saying, no, don't even before you even even think about submitting a plan. Don't do it because you're not going to now prove it says you can submit. And CNN spins this as going to let this company mining company. (laughs) Well, I'll read you some of the quotes. EPA staffers were shocked that protection of this pristine area was being removed. They even used the language from the rich environmental groups. <laughs> and it's just a smear. But it's not an oil will it, a drilling operation. It's not a natural gas operation. They, dr- they but mine But even if for, it were. Okay, okay, but they actually mine for gold and stuff like that and gold copper. And minerals, copper. We, copper goes into solar panels that they sold. Right. Where are we gonna... <laughs> Why are they doing this? What, what's going on at it's, CNN, the Clinton News Network? Look, it's not just CNN. It's the liberal media culture. Business is bad. Business wants to destroy the environment. Unless environmental regulation keeps increasing forever, then 
pristine areas are going to be destroyed. I'm intrigued about rich green lawyers driving this train. Well, NRDC is not scientists, it's mostly lawyers. And, you know, it used to be NIMBY, not in my backyard. Right. Yeah. Now it's banana. What's that? Build absolutely nothing anywhere near anybody. They use their media to assassinate real news. They use their schools to teach children that their president is another Hitler. They use their movie stars and singers and comedy shows and award shows to repeat their narrative over and over again. And then they use their ex-president to endorse the resistance, all to make them march, make them protest, make them scream racism and sexism and xenophobia and homophobia, to smash windows, burn cars, shut down interstates and airports, bully and terrorize the law abiding until the only option left is for the police to do their jobs and stop the madness. And when that happens, they'll use it as an excuse for their outrage. The only way we stop this, the only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. I'm the National Rifle Association of America, and I'm freedom's safest place. All right, welcome back to the second half of Live with Lou. I don't even know, I don't, did I even say the name of this show? I don't know what I'm doing here anymore. Anyway, um, a while back, I was uh, looking at, at the newspaper on October 23rd, and I thought, I saw a familiar face on the front page. I thought, oh, what's that about? And it says, Marysville Man Honored in Submarines Christening. And I thought, hey, that's incredible. That's my, that's my algebra teacher from Marysville high school. And, uh, <clears throat> when I went to Marysville high school, I had a good friend named, we called him tiny cause he was small, but his name was Donovan Charles and his dad was named by the same, same name. So, uh, Don, Donovan Charles or as all teachers were called then Mr. Or Mrs. <clears throat> Mr. Charles was an algebra teacher and Mrs. Charles was an English teacher and Mr. Charles was an, he liked to play uh, sports. And so I used to hang out over at their house on 19th street. And cause uh, we, my friend, their son, we were in the same year together and we played sports together. So we would hang out. And, uh, so at night, a lot of times, Mr. Charles had a key to the Marysville high school field house where there were two basketball courts end to end wood floors, just cool, just totally cool. Still there today on uh, 19th or, uh, let's see, is that 18th street where the, the street goes between the school uh, campuses <clears throat> and we'd go over there and he'd open up gym. We'd play till late in the, the night. And, uh, so fond memories of Mr. Charles called Don Charles. And it, it says in this article that Don Charles served in the Navy aboard the USS South Dakota during world war two and was honored as a part of a christening ceremony for the USS South Dakota nuclear attack submarine. That's just about to be launched. And so, uh, the article said an article by Chris Kaufman and photo by him, great photo of Mr. Charles and who was just an awesome guy. We all loved Mr. Charles and his wife, Shirley. Anyway, Mr. Charles is 92 today. He, he now uh, lives with his son, Donovan or tiny. We called him down. I believe they live in Roseville or Sacramento. Anyway, uh, they invited Mr. Charles who loves anything military. They invited him to a ceremony, uh, recently. And he says, I was so excited to be part of it. I held a piece of the teak wood, the, the deck of this uh, ship close to my heart because it might have been a part of the deck that I was on. Uh, my hands and knees scrubbed with a toothbrush that that deck uh, t says teak wood was part of the of the deck of the ship Charles served on and is going to be made into thresholds and and placed between some compartments on the general dynamics electric boat built vessel the new vessel. So anyway, Charles, Mr. Charles said I was treated like royalty. There were governors, admirals, and a hundred or so people came up to me after the ceremony to take pictures with me that he was on this uh, warship. Anyway, Mr. Charles, a South Dakota native, was drafted. He was one of the first guys that ever said to me, don't worry about going to college. Just go check out the world for a bit, then go to college if you want to. 
that's what he did. He used to drive not a Harley, but what they called an Indian motorcycle. You remember those Indian? It was a competitor to Harley at one time. And, um, so he was a 20 year, uh, teacher at, uh, at Marisol high. He said, I was drafted, uh, went into the Navy after high school, served two years from 44 to 46. And he says, I was watching our planes land and I saw a Japanese plane, uh, peel off and try to drop a bomb on the carrier USS exit, but he Essex E S S E X, but he missed. And the splash was so large. It went all over the carrier deck, which is about 60 feet tall. He said the ship he was serving on immediately began to fire at the attacking Japanese plane. The plane turned towards us and I could see the bullets hitting the water. So I jumped under the 16 inch turret gun to avoid being hit. I never knew any of about this. He never shared this with us as youngsters. Charles, who was a storekeeper, third class had a different battle station, had different battle stations while on the ship was part of the team manning the 16 inch gun and later as a loader on the 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. He said we were the first ship to arrive in Tokyo Bay and the first ship to fire on the homeland of Japan. Charles said we were loading up supplies later and heard they were going to drop a bomb that would level a city and we were all elated. So take that liberals who think, oh, man, well, they dropped the big old atomic bomb. We shouldn't have done that. During the final stages of the war, nuclear weapons were dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, he said the homecoming in San Francisco Bay was surreal. He said people were all along the Golden Gate Bridge dropping balloons upon us as we went underneath. Isn't that cool? My friend, Mr. Charles, always great memories of playing ball with him and guys his age a lot of the instructors would come out to play against us that were uh, just youngsters we didn't know jack and they were uh they were kind to us so uh mr charles who invested 20 years of his life into students coming to marys high school that was back when teachers wore suits ties right looking sharp uh, all the females wore dresses, were very nicely dressed. Their hairs was fixed. Today, you go out on some of these campuses, not on Doug Eshman's, but at Mary Kovala, but some, they look like they look like they just a homeless person washed their face and just came on campus to teach a class, like sit in on a class. So uh, I was sent an update uh, on the proposed homeless management plan for Yuba, Sut uh, Sutter County. By uh, It was sent to me by... Uh, Chuck Smith, who is, uh, he promised that he would keep me in the loop and keep me from running off the rails, and he's doing his job. So he sent me 16 pages. Jesus help me. 16 pages, that's like reading a short novel, of, of information on how to move this forward. Now, what we're talking about, people, uh, is what I call uh, uh, one of my friends sent me a list. Well, let me back up and say that Scott Mitnick, the CAO, the administrator for Sutter County, has been communicating with all the key people of Sutter County, the key uh, workers for the county of Sutter, different administrators, department heads, and other key people. And he sent out an email before the last supervisor's meeting to 29 people about all the details, the finances, uh, the machinations of how to put together this homeless fight, this war against homelessness to help uh, four point, uh, less than one half of 1% of the population, which is about somewhere between 100 people and 400 people, 450 people. And we're going to spend millions of dollars on it. So I, when I looked at the list of people he sent it to, the one person he didn't send it to was the one person you would hope that would get it, which was a guy named Nathan Black, auditor controller. He skipped him. So I'm leaving Nathan out of it. These 29 people, <clears throat> we found the salaries on them in 2016 from Transparent California. Three of them we could not find, so we guesstimated the salaries. But I call it the $5 million club. And the reason I call it the $5 million club, if you take all the salaries of those 
29 people and add them together, they come up to right at $5 million. Okay. So here's what I did. I'm guessing, but here's what I did. I divided 5 million by 12 and came up with a total of four. Get your pencil out. You can do this too. divide 5 million by 12. And I came up with $416,667. That is the amount we're paying this group of 29 of the top brightest people that we could find in the world to serve Sutter County. So we're paying $416,000 a month, almost 417 to 29 people. I divided that. You know, when I think of the amount of hours you work in a month, if you just take a four week month, you say 40, that's 160 hours, but I cut it down to 144 in a month because I figured that the, when you figure in sick leave, vacation, legal holidays, you're not doing a hundred, 160 hours. You're doing about 144 hours a month. So that's my guess. So I divided 144 hours into $416,667 and I came up with an hourly rate of $2,894 that as these, as these people come in to work in the morning and place their posterior on that soft chair, the meter runs at $2,894 an hour to have them working. Okay, you got that? Okay. So if you assume, if we assume that they're spending six hours a week, which is, I think, an underestimate, some of them are spending almost full time, others maybe not so hardly any time. I just took six hours a week. If that group of 29 people are focusing about six hours a week on Sutter County homeless, that's 100, 100 to 400 people, that's $17,364 a week in pay we're blowing out for that. If they're spending 12 hours a week, that's $34,728 a week that taxpayers are spending for that. A month, That's it. if they're just spending six hours a week, that's six, almost $70,000 a month we're investing in a, a couple hundred people. If they're spending 12 hours a week, that's... 138, almost $139,000 a month. This is the $5 million club. Now, I don't know, this whole problem started when we, you know, government creates crises and then they hire people to solve a crisis that never was a crisis, but they created a crisis. So government saw, started this crisis in America by giving away money and making excuses for people why they don't want to take the help that we've offered. Just like my friend who called in and Santos typed up and sent to me by email his comments on how he walked out of rehab after rehab. I teach at rehabs. In fact, I taught Friday night at the AXE meeting out in uh, Oliverst where a number of rehabs joined together, and I talked to them about not, screwing up when they leave a rehab, when they graduate and relapsing and how to avoid that. <clears throat> but many people walk right out of a rehab and then they walk right into the river bottoms, right? And then people like Scott Mitnick want to run around and pay for them to go from a rehab via the river bottoms into paying a thousand dollars a month for a hotel room. Now he wouldn't do that with his own money. I guarantee it. But he's willing to do that with your money, Nancy O'Hara. What they're willing to do that with your money and my money, right? Same way with the supervisors. The supervisors, I know some of these people. Some of them I don't know, and I don't think they want to know me. Some of them I do know, and I know how they manage their life. I've watched them, and they are they're successful in business. And they would not take care of their own children in the way that they're taking care of these homeless folks. If their children got on drugs or got on alcohol and they wouldn't follow their direction to get straightened out, they would not fund them for the rest of their life. That's exactly what we're doing. So uh, it's interesting. There's, I'm not going through 16 pages because I don't have the time to do this, but this whole issue is coming back before the board of supervisors in Sutter County on November 7th. 
I believe their meetings around 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. The last one went four to five hours. And uh, so now they're revising it. They were going to they were gonna build a building and have a tent city on Garden Highway. They're going to put up a permanent structure. Now, this is the amazing thing to me. <clears throat> it's, it's contradictory. They were going to build a building. As first, they're going to put up a tent tent city holding 200 people. Then they're going to put up a building next to it and remove some of the uses, a little league park, the, the <clears throat> posse arena, <clears throat> the twin cities, rod and gun shooting range. And, uh, but they call it a two year plan. And after two years, they're going to shut it down. Now that does not make any sense. That shouldn't make any sense to the homeless. You're going to have a temporary program that lasts two years. Are you going to solve homelessness? Now, my, the fascinating thing to me, every day that I drive over Simpson Lane, it, there's a message. It's like, it's like playing a, a tape over and over again or the same video over and over again. For years, decades, hundreds of years, the homeless never camped along the Uber River. Then all of a sudden they began camping there. And I thought, why isn't something, somebody doing anything? Nobody was doing anything and more and more and more came pretty soon. They were dumping their crap and their garbage and their cans and their old mattresses and carts into the Uber river, the pristine Uber river coming out of the, the foothills. I thought, what's going on here? Why are they just, I mean, this was even private property. They were in there. Nobody did anything. Then finally, we're going to create 14 sideways where you have these, these, uh, tough sheds and we're going to, and you build a fence around them like a little zoo. And the gorillas come out of the sheds, you know, and peek at you every time and then pee on you and spit on you. You know how they do in the zoo? And, and then throw stuff at you and then turn around and moon you. And so that's how the Bendor Zoo got started over there. And so they created that and they ran everybody. They went down and they evicted people. Just like you evict people out of a house, they served them eviction notices and evicted people out of these camps. And today, when you drive over the Uber River at the Simpson Lane Bridge, <coughs> I check it out and, and there's no one there. I thought that's a miracle. How can one day they say we can't do anything about it. Then they evict them and, and they're all gone. Why couldn't they have done that before? Now what they tell me, Roger Vaca tells me at the twin cities rescue mission who are the experts, but they're never included. Uh, they don't listen to them because they're Christians and they're stupid. Uh, you know, all Christians are stupid. And so, uh, they, they don't pay attention to Roger Vaca. And so Roger tells me that, that the homeless people are now resettling the horseshoe camp, the thorn tree camp. They're settling behind, uh, the Hollywood trailer court. They're also settling behind the, uh, old Marysville cemetery north of the Marysville city limits. Is Marysville police going to do anything? You county sheriff going to do anything? I don't know. Sutter County Sheriff says, we, we can't arrest our way out of this. I was talking to Jason Parker about that. He's the one that they put on administrative leave over there in Sutter County. They're going to get their nose broke over there in Sutter County on this. And they're, they're getting ready to fire him. It doesn't matter. The word is it doesn't matter what they're doing an investigation on Jason Parker because he's this criminal. Now they, they say he's this bad guy. Last year, he was Clint Eastwood of Sutter County. He got the Clint Eastwood Award, arresting all kinds of murderers and predators, child molesters, 40 child molesters, ran a whole program. This year, he's no good. He's no good, baby. He's no good. So they got him out on administrative leave painting, but they're going to fire him. Viol it's, so, it's so amazing. Isn't it amazing? When government breaks the law, it's okay. When you do something wrong, oh, yeah. In fact, let me read you a quote. This is by Hyman Rickover. You know who Hyman Rickover was? He's the father of the nuclear Navy. He lived to be 86 years of age. He was the winner of two congressional gold medals. He said this, if you're going to sin, sin against God, not the bureaucracy. God will forgive you, but the bureaucracy never will. Well, Jason Parker became a bean up the nose of the district attorney. And so she ain't going to have him back. And it don't matter whether it costs you and me as taxpayers, hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
But I think in the end, if they fire him, this, the county of Sutter is going to get a rude awakening and maybe get their nose broken. But the supervisors, as long as they don't have to pay their own money, isn't it amazing? If people that sat on these boards would get sued personally, I think they would behave a little bit better, don't you? <clears throat> I think they'd be a little bit more cautious if they were held liable personally <clears throat> rather than just go about this and just rip people off and just say things like, oh, we don't care. We're going to do this investigation because it says we have to. But we don't give a damn whether what it says. We're going to can that boy. I thought, all right. That's going to look good in a court document. So <clears throat> anyway, we were talking yesterday about this situation, this comment about we can't arrest our way out of this. And Jason Parker was reminding me, he said, you remember, Lou, when the first murder happened? And I said, yep. He said, remember Cain killed Abel? He said, people have been killing each other for thousands of years, and we still arrest murders. Isn't that interesting? We just go out and arrest them, put them in jail, put them in prison, give them the death penalty or whatever we do to them. But people just keep wanting to kill each other. And he said, we never have, give, we never have used that phrase on them, like we just can't arrest our way out of this thing. I don't, that's the craziest statement I've ever heard in my life. I don't think any women that are getting beaten to a pulp want the sheriff or the police chief to say, well, honey, we just can't arrest our way out of this. So you're just going to have to let him punch you and punch you till you're dead. Just let him punch. Maybe you could run for your life, but we're not going to, it's not, not, not going to do us any good to arrest your husband or your partner there because we can't arrest ourselves out of this thing. Or we got these pedophiles In fact, Some of them haven't even, we, what is we a year or two years down the road since they arrested 40 guys, some of them still free running around. They're probably molesting other little girls. They're trying to have sex with a 9, 14-year-old girl, and they're still running around out there. And we could say, hey, well, you know, guys are just want, you know, guys love to have sex with these underage girls and or underage boys, and, you know, we just can't arrest our way out of it. Well, it's interesting on these recommendations with Scott Mitnick now, they have now written themselves a no camping law that's got some teeth in it supposedly they passed it right and uh, and now they are going to say we're going to enforce we're going to enforce the law i thought that's not a new concept we're going to enforce the law we're supposed to enforce the law i thought we were supposed to it seemed like anytime i get in trouble they always want to enforce the law but anytime somebody else wants to get in trouble they say ah, we don't want to enforce the law like people harassing people like when I go try to go into Walgreens and get me some drugs or some toothpaste and people are always wanting to hit me up for a taco over there but he looks like he's so shit-faced I said that guy he gonna vomit a taco right back up I don't think that guy's gonna handle a taco right now I think he better get some Pepto-Bismol or something like that but these guys are all looking looking cross-eyed at me wanting me to get him a taco give me a dollar for a taco and I I don't think he wanted a taco. I think he wanted a, something of the alcohol, adult beverage type. We got an hour left. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the homeless on the back side of this, and uh, we'll be right back. All right. We're circling the runway here. We got one hour to go, and then they're going to switch over to some sports talk. Some of you like that. So uh, I wanted to read this. Uh, you, you know, I saw this week where millennials, about half of them, think that being being in a communist country would be the way to go. And a professor wrote, I, I don't have time to really go into all the, the details on it, but a professor at one of the top universities did a, because it's the 100th year, right, since uh, the start of communism. 1917 the soviet union in russia and then it became the soviet union but he was talking about i think it's 65 or 67 million people that have been killed <clears throat> to take over countries and force them to be communist and so president reagan told this story about how it was in the soviet union and he says 
There's a 10-year delay in the Soviet Union for delivering an automobile, and only one out of seven families in that country own, an, own a car. You go through uh, a big process when you're ready to buy, and then you put up the money in advance. So he said this man laid down his money, and the man in charge said, okay, come back in 10 years, get your car. And uh, so the guy who is the purchaser said morning or afternoon. And, and the fellow behind the counter said, well, 10 years from now, what difference does it make? He said, well, the plumber is coming in the morning. You know, people have no idea what they're talking. And unfortunately, the kids are so stupid in college. It's just a tragedy. They have no idea. I remember uh, sitting around the table in my parents' home, and we lived in East Marysville, and we could go out on the back porch and watch the B-52 bombers when Beale Air Force Base, before it was a reconnaissance base with a U-2 and SR-71. It was a strategic air command base, and B-52 bombers would touch and go land all day and all night practicing, and they were actually flying from there and then going to Vietnam. And the whole concept of the Strategic Air Command is that there are a certain number of B-52 bombers constantly flying around the world in the air at all times, a certain number, in case we needed to do a nuclear strike, in case of nuclear war broke out. That's, that was the kind of vigilance that there was in the 19, early 1960s. And uh, so uh, young people in grammar school – pre-high school knew all about the Soviet Union and the threat of communism, whether it's from China or whatever. And so today that to have people in college think that maybe it'd be cool to be communist is, is pretty amazing, but you can see it because we, we've kind of, uh, the nation has actually become socialist and you could call it communism one step at a time. When you realize that every move you make and if you don't, if you're not in business, you don't really get this, but any type of decision you make in business, like I just talked to Kumar Kairam at the Washington Avenue grocery store he has that he runs with his family. He has three children and a wife and Kumar was jacked around for like three years by the city of Yuba city who they didn't invest a nickel into his business. He bought the property. He bought all his merchandise. He bought a cash register. He paid for all the permits, all the fees, but then they wanted to come in and tell him what he could, could and could not sell at his liquor store. He got a liquor license and then they came in and said, well, we, you can't sell the 16 ounce beer, right? Is that, if that doesn't ring really wrong with you, you are a socialist. You think, oh, well, you know, we should have a say on what everybody does, right? It's like the, Andy Vasquez, Vasquez, Andy Vasquez, and I were talking, and we were laughing about the fact that people that pay no tax, no income taxes, are the biggest people to say the rich don't pay enough taxes. I thought, why would you care? You don't pay any taxes. The majority of the people in the country pay no income taxes. Hello? So, why would people that pay no taxes be why would their voice be given any weight to people that pay the rest of the taxes, the taxes? Hello. So when we see this government of Sutter County spending millions of not, we're not talking about the $5 million club coming out of their pocket with a charity don't contribution. We're talking about them spending your money on people that have already had money spent for them. You think, oh, well, we did research and not all of them receive aid, but there are free places for them to stay and they don't go to them. If they don't go to places they could go to, why should the taxpayers and consumers or the people that make Sutter County exist and function? Why should they be responsible to pay for more buildings and more food and more facilities for people to come to when they won't use what's already there and get out of the situation. Why should we pay for hotel rooms? <clears throat> Why should we do that? 
So this the recommendations coming up for this Tuesday, you know, it's amazing to me. I was told yesterday that Jean Jordan, I think she's listed in, uh, on the Transparent California's Jean Jordan Ferguson. I don't know which name she wants to stick with. She's getting like these Mexicans that have four, four different names, and they keep switching them around all the time on me. I heard that she went to law enforcement to see if they could build a case against the the nonprofit Sutter County Airport people uh, that they were bringing drugs into Sutter County so she could shut down the airport. Now, I want you to think about what the big picture is here. What's going on here? We're, we're, we're doing all these meetings. We got 29, 30 people in Sutter County making $5 million annually, all working to create a whole bureaucracy. Even though there's a whole bureaucracy already out there to serve homeless people or vague, you know, all the, why call them homeless? Just, just call them mentally ill, drug addicted, ne'er-do-wells, vagrants. Why don't we call them what the pro let's get down to the problem. They say, well, the problem really is housing. No, the problem isn't housing. You can't keep people in a house that are, that are under the influence. They will knock the windows out, pee all over the carpet, right? Not pay the rent. Even if you pay almost all the rent. They'll beat up the person next door, right? We just had a guy arrested homeless for, for rape. Uh, Ron, uh, uh, what's his name? Kelly. I can't remember his first name. Got arrested. He, he got, he didn't get arrested. He raped a girl down here at Simpson Lane and they, the rest of the homeless guy, they didn't think they should fuss with having a court case. They just murdered and beat him to death with a, with a tree limb, Ron Kelly or Greg Kelly. I knew him from jail. He was in that jail for years. So the, so the Sutter County says now the plan is we're not going to build a building. We're not going to have a tent city. We're not going to use Whitaker hall. Now what we're going to do this week, each, each supervisor meeting, it changes. Now we're going to solicit applications for interested residents, business representatives, and stakeholders to serve on an 11 member citizens committee to review and recommend a homeless shelter location. That's what they call pooling your ignorance to come up with a decision. <laughs> we're going to revise the county fire code to prohibit recreational fires on public property without a permit. How many times have you seen the river bottoms on fire? Do you think, you think, lightning hits the river bottoms and said no it's homeless people drunk out of their minds lighting the, the river bottoms on fire and then the yuba city fire department has to go down there and spend all kinds of money putting it out number three enforce all applicable codes hey 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 hey, hey. we're having a big breakthrough we're going to enforce the law including camping ordinance and fire ordinances isn't that amazing we're going to monitor the river levels because people are so under the influence. We got to go pick them up and haul them out of the river. They can't get out of there themselves. The average duck, it's, it's amazing. Every time the river comes up, it drowns somebody. You know why? Because they're so loaded that they, the river floods over them before they even come to consciousness and it drowns them. You know that? I'm aware of that because I worked with the fire department. It says where... You know, we hire these, the $5 million club, so they can run down there when we realize the river's coming up and run down there and say, hey, 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 you got to leave the river bottoms because the water's going to come up here. It's the same group that tells you to wear a hat when the sun is really hot and drink a lot of water. That's the same group. We pay them $5 million to tell us as adult humans to drink water, to hydrate our body, and to wear a big brim cap to keep our head cool. They're probably the same people that say you might want to invest in an umbrella if you just did your hair. So we're going to monitor the water levels. Thank you, Jesus for the, in case people are down there and we're going to include motel and hotel vouchers. So listen, the key is if you want a motel or hotel, move down to the river bottoms, right? It's kind of like where folks go to the, the phone booth. You know what a phone booth is? There's still a few around town. And they dial 911 or they dial it on their phone that's out of, out of uh, money. 
So you can still dial 911 and they have the ambulance pick them up and they got a headache and they drive them over to the ER and they get first class service coming through the back door. Did you know that? Well, I know that because I'm involved in that kind of business. So this says number four says we're going to include motel and hotel vouchers and warming centers. We just won't let people, we just won't let people, uh, make a hard right decision in their life. We're just going to take care of them. We, we just are not going to let people straighten up like this gentleman. We wouldn't let this guy straighten up that wrote me, uh, called in here earlier. We're going to, he said, we're going to, uh, they're going to trim vegetation. They're going to go down and, c and clean up the river bottoms. Then this is what I love. This is, I love these government euphemisms. That's where you use a different term to disguise what's really going on. Number six says we're going to def de develop a plan to remove unclaimed debris. Now, what do you, I want you to think really think, dial it down real. I know it's hard Saturday morning. You're a little fuzzy from last night de develop a plan to remove unclaimed debris. What do you think unclaimed debris might be? That would be garbage. And they spent, I think last year, a quarter of a million dollars. I think Yuba County spent more. They had to bring in the big, not the, not a backhoe, but the big units. I forget what they call those things. Big dog scoopers to get. And so these people that are responsible citizens, they haul all kinds of stuff down there and deposit the shopping carts and all their stuff. They just, you think they would be environmentally sensitive and they'd be concerned about their carbon footprint down there, but they aren't. So we have to remove unclaimed debris. In other words, if it's debris that's claimed, then they can keep it in their sharpened cart cart and walk down Plumas street. And then they're going to, we're going to create 42 units of housing, affordable housing. Affordable means that you and I pay for it. Did you know that? That doesn't mean if they say, Hey, there's a good buy on that house. No, 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 no. This affordable housing is a euphemism or a trigger word for you get to pay for somebody else's house. There you go. Hold that thought. You get to pay for somebody else's house. They're not going to have to pay for it. Why? Because, uh, a meteorite hit them and it disabled them from working. You know, nobody's going to hire somebody that's goofy or can't get to the job on time or got a bad attitude or thinks they got to be paid $20 an hour for a $10 an hour job, right? Or is under the influence, can't pass a urine test, right? So it's interesting. The poor airport guys, they started that nonprofit, you know, Sutter County. It's so interesting. They said several years ago, before this nonprofit bunch of guys took over the airport, guys and gals, uh, and made a nonprofit, they said, we'll run the airport. Before that, the county says, hey, the supervisors, hey, we're, we're going broke. That, that airport just always in the red. We're, we're going broke. <laughs> Either they were totally ignorant or they were just jacking the whole Sutter County citizens around by not telling them that they were supposed to be paying fair market value rent on the welfare office and public works and all those little entities that surround the airport fence, everybody around there was supposed to be paying fair market value to the airport maintenance fund to take care of the airport. No wonder it was going broke. So all those little entities all the way around, owe, owe the airport hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe a million dollars, maybe $2 million. No wonder the airport was going broke because they weren't the board of supervisors, not this current board only, but this board, the previous 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 board all just blew off the law. You try breaking the law over there in Sutter County, see how you do on it. As Admiral Rickover said, if you're going to sin, you're better off sinning against God, not the bureaucracy. God will forgive you, but the bureaucracy won't. Try violating the law over there in Sutter County, but the supervisors can violate the law, cheat, steal, lie. 
nothing happens, right? Oh, yeah, we blew a half million dollars. Well, there's more where that came from. We'll just, well, maybe we'll pass a 1% sales tax on the citizens of Sutter County and make up for that. We, well, we had good intentions. I just saw where Jim Kitchen, the city councilman for many years on the Marysville City Council, died the other day. He was an, I want you to hold this thought. He was an economics professor at Yuba College for like 30 or 40 years. But he voted to take the city in debt that now is bankrupt, essentially bankrupt of the city. We're talking about an economics professor that floats bonds that we have no means to pay back to buy that we end up owing $17 million on a piece of property that's $1.5 million in worth, five acres along across the street from Ellis Lake that's still bare today. What was it, back in 2006 they did that? This is an economics professor, and you, we send our kids to sit under these idiots. Is, is that a – is that a – you pay people. You know, I had a lady – I was talking to her the other day. She says she used to work for uh, Sutter County, and she also worked at Planned Parenthood at one time. And she said, Lou, it cost $900 a unit to go to, like, one of these colleges. Now, did you know that? How many, how much, like a class three units, that would be $2,700. It's like, say what? And to get taught what? That socialism is cool? that you have an economics professor that votes to float bonds and we have no means to pay them back and take a huge risk on the general fund where you can't even go bankrupt. You can't even, you can't even take, give the property back because you can't pay for it. Whoa, baby. Finally, when they reauthorized bonds, because they couldn't pay for the first bonds, Jim Kitchen voted against it and said, if you vote for this, it will bankrupt the, the county or the city. Do you know the only reason it hasn't bankrupted us so far is because you, a lot of you guys that are just stupid voted for a 1% sales tax increase in the city of Marisol and bought the lie that it was to save the police department. We don't even need a police department in Marisol. We could have the, the sheriff, the sheriff. Uh, we got the sheriff headquarters. I was just there twice this last week talking to, Sheriff's deputies about trauma intervention. Beautiful office right there in the city. We got them right here. They're not in, they're not 50 miles away or 10 miles away in another part of the county. They're right in the city. And we got to have a police. I just saw, I heard this, this Tuesday night at the city council meeting, they're going to now hire an animal control officer for 3.4 square miles. We already got animal control officers. They just need to chip in some money towards the county. Why would we hire another animal? Why don't we have an animal control for East Marysville or a police department for East Marysville and a police department for West Marysville? Why should we, like, think all together? You talk about stupid thinking. No wonder we deserve to go broke. If I didn't own my house, I'd have moved long ago. I got, I, I'm just too old. I got my house paid for. Honestly, this is so crazy. It's like... It's like having people from a mental institution running your city. It's unbelievable. Are we out of time? Oh, we got two minutes. Oh, we got all kinds of time. So we got the $5 million club. Do you know how much some of these people make? Oh, my God. Let me give you an idea. We have Gene Jordan makes $215,000. Man, when she, when she finishes a cup of coffee, it costs the citizens like a few hundred bucks of her time. And then some of them, people tell me some of these people are down shopping in downtown Yuba City during the day. You think, holy mackerel, man. It's like they sh we should drive them around with a chauffeur to hurry so that we could hurry up their shopping expedition and get them right back to work, right? Why let them drive? And what if we should, like, have free parking spots in Pluma Street for – these executives for the county so they won't waste any time they can get a, a spot right away and not have to wait to get in there we got luann cummings she only does do, 
she gets two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars you know she didn't even do any medical work she's a medical she's a doctor of the county she didn't even do any medical work in the jail dr cassidy he used to be the jail doc and be the health health officer and you know when when he retired you know they tried to fire him over and over again right because he he had two his ideas weren't liberal enough so he sued the he sued the county one I should hope Jason Parker's listening. He sued the county one and kept his job. But the, but you know something? When he retired, they replaced him with two doctors, one to do the health office stuff and one to do the jail. Is that amazing? How about this? Ro, uh, Regina Romeo, she's health and human services. She's a gal that's going to can Jason Parker. She makes $155,000 and change. Thank you, Jesus. She's going to have a good Christmas. Huh. How about Diana Birmingham? She's the gal that could have could have prosecuted. She's an attorney. She used to work for Carl Adams. Now she works for welfare. She makes over $200,000. And when she was brought with a case against Sarah Garibay that was sleeping around with Carl Adams, she was committing welfare fraud. Diana didn't wasn't interested in prosecuting her, but she makes two hundred thousand. We're gonna go. We're gonna take a break, son. Bringing new meaning to the term first responders. Fellow community members stepping forward, volunteering their time to help others faced with what might be some of the most traumatic incidents in their lives. It's called the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP. It's been used in communities across the United States for years, and its volunteers have been dispatched to provide what they call emotional first aid. A collaboration between police, paramedics, fire departments, and even hospital staff is making sure residents are emotionally taken care of in a time of crisis. Residents are volunteering their time with the Trauma Intervention Program, or TIP, dispatched to the scene of a fire, accident, or death to focus on the emotional needs of those left behind. It's just being there and being comforting, like a good friend or an extension of your family. Ready to assist, sit, and listen to community members in a time of tragedy. To learn more about the Trauma Intervention Program, visit yubasuttertip.org or call 673-9300. Check out the Territorial Dispatch. Papers are weekly and can be obtained free at distribution or by mail through subscription. It's only locally owned and operated newspaper in the region. The paper is the rest of the story. And also check out the E-Territorial. It's an online version of the Territorial Dispatch, which features local news and events for the Yuba Sutter, Calusa, and Nevada County areas. You'll also find daily and breaking news updates, current traffic, and weather information, along with a calendar of local events. Visit the E-Territorial at at eterritorial.com. Hello, Liberty Loving Patriots. This is Chris Ann Hall, Liberty's lobbyist and founder of Liberty First University. You're listening to Live with Lou on KMYC 1410 AM, The Patriot. The founding fathers and mothers didn't pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor so we could sit around and rest on their laurels. They expected us to exercise our God-given rights and to practice eternal vigilance to monitor and hold accountable our fellow citizens to whom we delegate power. The federal government is not the supreme law of the land. The Constitution is. To learn more about the Constitution and to help Lou and me get the word out about how our founders truly wanted this republic to operate, visit me at chrisannhall.com and at libertyfirstuniversity.com. The Constitution does not say that government shall decree the right to keep and bear arms. The Constitution says the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The NRA believes that America's laws were made to be obeyed and that our constitutional liberties are just as important today as 200 years ago. I'm officially announcing the NRA's endorsement of Donald Trump for president. The NRA has led the fight time and time again to protect our fundamental freedoms. 
NRA members and gun owners helped put President Trump over the top. The NRA has been a great supporter. They love our country. The election has consequences, and we won. We're the toughest, best organized, and most respected defender of American values. And tens of millions of our fellow Americans look to us for leadership. We're gonna keep winning because we are going to make America great again. America is no stronger than its people. And that means you and me. This one time racism saved my life, man. I was, I was on a plane. I, I, was coming, I was coming from overseas, and uh, I don't know how this guy got a machine gun on the plane, but he stood up, man. He said, everybody, get on the ground. Nobody look at my face. I started freaking out, because he was Chinese. I was like, why is he talking like that? He was screaming and crying. I was the only brother on the plane. Well, I thought I was the only brother. I looked over, there was one other black dude. He was from Nigeria. I, I looked over to him, he was looking right in my face, man. He didn't say two words to me, he just looked at me, he was like. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to talk, I knew just what he was talking about. I looked right back at him, I was like. <laughs> Some white dudes on the front of the plane seen us, they were like, oh my God. We were just communicating that we understood the situation. We were both seeing the same thing. What we understood was simple. Terrorists don't take black hostages. <laughs> That's the truth. I have yet to see one of us on the news reading the hostage letters. Um, mm. They is treating us good. Uh, we all chilling. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Ray Ray and Big Steve and uh, send some new points. You're not gonna see it. And terrorists are smart, they know what they're doing there, you know. They terrorists. They know it's black people's bad bargaining chips. <laughs> they called the White House, hello? We have got five blood. Hello. <laughs> All right. Well, I uh, mentioned earlier that <clears throat> elite universal security, Monty Hecker and his group, uh, they asked me to promote their business on the show here. So I'm doing that. And I like Monty. Uh, I've known him for a couple of years. And uh, we got to talking about my little uh, commercial uh, little strip at the corner of 10th and E Street where the Tri-Counties Bank is and Starbucks and CVS and AT&T, all, all kinds of people, Panda Express are over there. And people, homeless people always want to tackle me over there when I'm trying to do business over there. And so Monty said the first thing he did when he took over there because the police wouldn't respond is, he, he had his people over there patrolling, walking around and, and, uh, it's, it's a mess over there. And he said, Lou, the first thing we did was he, we built a cage. You know how people put a concrete block system around the dumpster and then they have gates on it. Well, they had to do better than that. They had to put a top on it. So they actually put a, it's like a cabana top of steel girders across the top. So you can't climb in over the, over the top that sits on top of the walls. It's like a, a grate on top, over the top of the dumpsters. So you, you cannot break in and it's thick steel. So they had to do that on two dumps. It must've cost them 20 grand to, to put that top on there. So they did that. He said that cut down the traffic a lot because people aren't in there foraging around in the, the dumpsters that all those businesses use. And so, uh, 
Anyway, I was uh, looking on Monty's website, and you can go to it if you go to Elite. If you're looking for a job, uh, it, they're hiring. And uh, it's at Elite, E L I T E dot A P I hyphen academy, not underscore, but a hyphen, and then dot com. And so if you go on there, it says now hiring all locations. So he's, he's in the Yuba Center area, but he's also in Chico. And I know some people listen from the Butte County area. Uh, maybe they're up in Oroville as well. I don't know, but they, it says Chico area. And also they're all the way up to Redding. But one thing he, when I was talking to Mon, he said, Hey Lou, talk about the API Academy. So they got this incredible Academy. If you're, if you're getting a, uh, you could even be in high school and if you're 18 uh you can get started now i, I learned this last week because i had a representative from uh the one stop speak at the jail with me and i was talking i was pitching yuba college a little bit i was commenting hey you could go take a welding class or auto class at yuba college she said lou for people coming out of jail that takes too long she said we can get them a welding certificate in five months at a welding it's just a welding training where you can get the certificates and you don't have to wait for a cert. You know how, when you go to college, you got to, well, that class class isn't going to be offered this month, but maybe it'll be offered next or next quarter or next semester. It's not offered this semester. So you waste all this time with college, right? But, uh, Monty was telling me, uh, Hecker who runs elite security that they offer this API school Academy. And it says, as long as you're 18 years of age and have no felonies or violent misdemeanors, you, you might be able to obtain a guard card, a certificate and exposed firearm permit at 18 years of age. That's awesome. Right. And he says the, the process is really simple, painless and, uh, and you acquire the knowledge and the training to become a security officer armed or unarmed either way. So the guys that and guys and gals that patrol near where I live are all unarmed, but they have situations where they have to be armed as well. So you can get firearms training. You can get pepper spray spray training. You can get handcuff training, live scan, fingerprinting training, taser training, a de-escalation of force training, verbal judo, they call it, um, mandatory, uh, this AB two twenty eight eighty mandatory and elective training and an annual security guard review and practice training. So, Hey, a lot of resources, get them right here in Yuba County and, uh, pretty, pretty cool. So I think it's a great opportunity to connect and you can go online and check this out. They have on November 18th, they are going to have a taser class and pepper spray class. Uh, if they have at least three students sign up. So, uh, anybody could probably dip in on that. It doesn't, it doesn't give the cost, but, uh, you can call them at seven, four, nine, zero, two, eight, zero and check it out. So, uh, so there's jobs. If some of you that have already been trained in other areas, maybe you're moved into the area and you could call them up at seven, four, nine, zero, two, eight, three or zero two eight zero, just uh, different extensions. And, uh, you could get hooked up for a job, or maybe you just need to refresh your course on your training, or you need a certificate or a license or whatever, whatever, but go to this website and, uh, the basic website homepage is elite dot API hyphen academy.com. And you can get hooked up with Monty Hecker and get yourself a job as they say. And also I want to just remind you <clears throat> as I did earlier today about Nathan Black, the auditor controller of Yuba County, who now has been placed on a state commission. And he's going to be speaking at the Sutter Buttes Tea Party Patriots meeting at Glad Tidings campus at Highway 99 and Eager Road. The meeting starts at 630. If you get there a little early, you can get in at six. Uh, anybody can attend this. You don't have to be a member. Uh, you can, you can probably become a member, but you don't have to, you can just go enjoy the event. Enjoy, uh, Nathan. One of the things I like about Nathan, he's easy. You can ask questions. You're not going to get him lathered up. You can ask questions and he'll help you understand what's shaken with the homeless situation. Where, where's the money going to come from, right? To, to more money to take care of a hundred or 200 people. 
The interesting thing about the homeless thing is that they're only going to have a building that houses 60 people and yet they're going to solve homelessness. It ain't going to happen folks. It, it, until, until they quit giving handouts to people and they, until people go get the help they need, right? There's help out there. You know, it's like my, I remember my grandfather, they, I never met him. They said, Lou, he died because he never would go to the doctor and he died of appendicitis. How many of you have died of appendicitis out there? Well, if you're listening to me, you probably went to the doctor and had him cut it out, right? Had a pain in your gut. They went in there and took your appendix out. So if you don't get the help you need, maybe you'll shorten your life some, right? So, uh, Nate Black will be talking about the CalPERS, which is the pension system that is a disaster, ripping the county off. It's going to take us into what they call servant, uh, service insolvency. That's not bankruptcy. That's where you go to the county to get a permit and they're closed because they don't open every day because it's, they don't, they can't afford to open because they, <clears throat> they can afford to pay all those salaries to the five million dollar club but they can't keep the doors open because it's too expensive to pay the utilities and and uh, they got to give people time off and they can't give people time off the way they used to so they either run shorthanded like nate black says lou we just run shorthanded we were open every day of the week over there auditor controllers but we just are we are light lighter in employees on those days we got to spread them around to to uh, comply with scott mitnick's new program but I'm told that some of the uh, departments actually close a day. So you just have to call over there and see if they're open. Say, oh, we pay millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes, but we can't even get the, our departments open all the time. So Nate Black's going to be at the Tea Party this Monday night, two days from now at 630, and he's going to be talking about anything you want to talk about. He'll probably have a question and answer time. But he's going to be talking about CalPERS, going to be talking about the uh, the homeless situation and about the, you know, how good Sutter County's doing or how poorly, okay? Check that out. All you have to do is get over there. Listen, like you heard Chris Ann Hall say a couple times today on our show, this country was not designed for pew potatoes, people that want to sit in the stand. You got to, you got to take the bat, get up to the plate, and put some wood on the ball. You got to show up at the supervisors and meeting and say, hell no, we're not going to do that. All right. We're not going to do that right there. I'm not going to do that. It's interesting to me that this homeless program, they're not going to allow anybody with any criminal record by God into those deals. Well, I'm, you know, it's interesting. You can have a criminal record and you can go to the rescue mission. Did you know that? Because they're trying to help people with a criminal record. You know, just because somebody has got a criminal record, isn't the end of the world. If they're a pedophile and the government permits per prohibits them from being close to children, that's another story. But if a guy's, if the guy killed somebody or beat a guy up, right. Or is, uh, or is out and he's free now, but he served his time for domestic violence or burglary or robbery or carjacking, et cetera, et cetera. The rescue mission takes them in and helps them get a job and helps them get on their feet. But the, the county of Sutter is now saying we're not going to allow anybody into our program that's under the influence or, um, or has committed a crime. It's got a record. Now, how's that going to work? That, I, I just, you know something, what this is, this, uh, it's a pooling of ignorance. These people don't know who they're dealing with. I was telling the, uh, I spoke to about 50 addicts the other night. They're in recovery. And I was telling them, I said, you know something? Uh, the government is the worst people to run a rehab because they don't know Jack Diddley about the problem, right? All they do is fund the problem. So it gets bigger. If you fund it, it'll get bigger. The people that run the greatest rehabs are recovered addicts because they can read an addict and they, they know when to say no, 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 no. And when to say yes and, and how to deal with them. Right. So, uh, anyway, it's a sad situation. The government should not be involved in any kind of welfare work, any kind of charity work. They're horrible at it. Horrible, horrible. Did I say horrible? I say horrible. I meant horrible. That's what I really meant. So, um, okay. 
by the way, the liberals, did you see where this columnist is now uh, fat shaming Sarah Huckabee Sanders? Did you see that? These people that, that indict supposedly Republicans or conservatives as the war on women, and they mock the press person of the United States of America, the spokesperson for the administration. They mock her body and how she dresses and how she puts on her makeup. Does that like strike anybody as really sick? That sucker is sick. Sometimes the best remedy for people like that is having them step outside and taking a rubber hose to them. Just beat them, beat them to a pulp. Honestly, that, that is so, because they don't like our politics, the best thing they can do is call her names and mock her and say, well, she'd look better. She's chunky or something like that. It's just stupid stuff. It's just like so offensive. It's just like unbelievable. I, I don't understand it. You know, I like this Scott Pruitt guy. Scott Pruitt is the head of the environmental protection agency. And the first thing he did was he stopped sue and settle corruption. That's where there's these liberals that are in, on the, in the EPA and they actually are in cahoots with the environmentalists. So they convince them to sue the government and then the EPA liberals, they, they said, well, let's not go to court. We'll settle with you and we'll just give you tens and $50 million, hundred million dollars. And we'll settle with you and we'll change the law to prohibit human beings from being on public land, right? Sue and settle. Pruitt shut that down totally. It's over. The second thing he's done is he's eliminated uh, the agency, the EPA has a committee or a, a group of science advisors that advise the EPA. Well, those under Obama and maybe even under Bush, those advisors could actually, even though they're on the inside, they would apply and get big grants to the tune of like 70 or 80 million a year. He has eliminated that. In other words, if you're on the, on, in on the board at EPA an agency, uh, you're the science advisors for the agency. You cannot apply for grants. Does that seem fair? That seems fair to me. So, uh, the EPA calculates that over 20 members of three of EPA's 22, uh, commissioners or groups, they have the science advisory board, they have the clean air scientific committee and the board of scientific counselors. Three of those receive $77 million in direct EPA grant funding while serving on these committees. Three of those people. Isn't that amazing? You talk about having an insider track. So he says, Pruitt says, strengthening independence from EPA, increasing state, tribal, and local government participation, and adding geographic diversity and fresh perspectives will improve the integrity of EPA scientific advisory committee. You know, the whole problem with this whole global warming slash climate change has been these scientists who have said whatever the po political people want to get science, uh, science grants, right? They're little prostitutes. You pay me, I'll do tricks for you. That's what this is all about. So reporters asked Pruitt whether the EPA would also have safeguards over agency science advisors that receive grants from private industry. That's always, that's also a conflict. Pruitt explained that the EPA can only control agency grants. However, he added that the EPA ethics board would ensure that there would not be any conflicts of interest coming from advisors who receive industry associated grants. That's the reason that for years they Al, Al Gore and all these people would say, 99.99% .99 of all scientists agree that global warming, we have a crisis on it. It's because they all paid off. They're little, they're global warming hookers. 
This is what they are. Little prostitutes out there. They got paid. They get millions of dollars, and then they write these little papers, and they say, "Oh yeah, we don't think we don't think we're going to be able to last another ten years. It's just like we're going to fry out there. Crazy." Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, also the Golden State Warriors. What incredible! You know, I I like to I played basketball some when I was a kid, and so I really enjoy watching great basketball. But the Warriors. Their liberal antics are just about going to send me over the edge and and run the whole game for me. So Kerr, Steve Kerr, whose dad was killed by Hamas, says the headline says, although we're not invited, oh, we, we're not invited. What do they care about going to the White House? The guys are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So you know what happens is they go, they're going to go back to Washington, D.C. to play the Washington Wizards, right? So while they're back there, they usually do some stuff, right? Like a lot of these teams, when they go visit a, a city, they'll go do something cool or they'll go to a museum or they'll go put on a little uh, help for kids or whatever. But they, you know, so before they were, they were even invited, they assumed they would get invited because they were the champions last year of the uh, National Basketball Association, right? So Steve Curry or Steph Curry starts talking about how he isn't going to go. And other ones say, well, I'm not going to go. Well, I'm not going to go. They're the ones that started the whole thing about talking about, well, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to go because we don't like him. Right? So finally Trump says, you're not invited. We'll just skip the whole thing. Well, now they're blaming Trump. Isn't that interesting? Now they blame Trump because, well, he, we, we might've gone. Oh, we might have gone. Well, we we may have gone. We were still discussing it. What bunch of little pansies? They're, they talk about like they're a bunch of adolescent kids. Steve Kerr says, well, we're sorting through it all, but before we could get to anything, the president beat us to the punch. What a liar. Steve Kerr comes across a real fair guy. He's lying. He's not telling the truth. He said, then finally he says, I don't think we would have gone. Come on, you wouldn't have gone. I don't think we would have. After he says the president withdrew the invite, right? I don't think we would have gone, said Kerr, and I think we knew that. So why don't you just be honest about it? We weren't going anywhere, so why blame it on Trump? You big sissies, come on. Several of us had been very critical of the president in the past year. Hey, between Kerr and Popovich with the San Antonio Spurs, they're just gnarly, man. They're like all funky about Trump. So why even bring it up? Just ignore the whole thing and go do your, if you want to help kids in Washington, D.C. area, just shut your mouth, go back there, keep your mouth shut. When the press asks you about it, just say, uh, I don't have any comment about it and go on about your way instead of running your mouth all the time. Kerr says, having been to the White House multiple times himself, because he's been on all kinds of teams before that have won championships, the Chicago Bulls, the San Antonio Spurs. So Kerr says, I've been there many times myself, including when his brother worked there under the Clinton administration. That's a bad sign. Kerr acknowledged that more than anything, I'm disappointed for the players who have never been there. Well, too bad. You got a big bad attitude, dude. Y'all got a bad attitude, so screw it. Just keep your mouth shut and go put on a little, go into the ghetto, put on a little basketball seminar for them. Are we out of time? We're out of time. Santos says go home. The next guys are, they need their chance. We'll see you next week. Uh, let's see. Uh, be kind to strangers. They might be an angel unaware. We'll see you. 